Hello, now today we are in Spain driving a Chinese car with Italian plates. Now, how does that all work? Well, this is Leap Motor. They are, a, I guess, a Chinese tech company that makes cars being distributed internationally by Stellantis. That's right, the global company that makes Jeep, Alfa Romeo, uh, Citroen, Peugeot, all sorts of brands. Well, they've partnered up with Leap Motor and this is kind of what we get. Now, if you look up in the top corner there, you'll see our full review of this car. And while this one looks pretty much exactly the same as what we have already reviewed in New Zealand, it is quite a bit different. And I'm gonna go and show you why. Now, if we start at the back, we have pretty much what is in existence on the last car we tested. It is ultimately an electric car. We have a charging flap here with DC charging. Not particularly fast, 65 kilowatt, but you know, not too bad. And driving that rear axle is an electric motor, and this is the only drive the vehicle has. That's at 158 kilowatts and 320 newton meters. It means the car's reasonably brisk, but not so much. It's in the seven second range for that. Nicely packaged there under the rear axle. Now, as we come through the middle of the car, underneath there is a battery, but it's a bit small in the 68 kilowatt hour unit we've seen in the previous Leap motor. This one is 28.4 kilowatt hours, and it is, you know, being smaller means the car's lighter, hopefully means you're gonna get a little more efficiency. And the reason why you can get away with that smaller batch is if we move forward under the bonnet, there's no frunk, so that's a bad thing. But in a good way, that leaves space for a 1.5 litre petrol motor. Now, this only charges the car. There is no direct connection to the wheels at all. It's just that 1.5 litre non-turbo petrol driving a generator. That can produce up to 50 kilowatts, which is not a huge amount, but it's enough to pump power back into the battery when you're not using it. Because by having the electric motor there and that battery there, and they try to maintain a fairly large amount of charge in the battery, minimum of about 9%, you can basically use that peak power from the battery to run the car at top and then charge it up in between. It all kind of averages out. So yeah, the motor's there, but there is nothing driving those front wheels. This isn't all wheel drive at all. It is completely a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now the vehicle has four drive modes. EV, which runs it in pure EV, down to that 9%. EV Plus, which uh, allows you to have a little more buffer and goes up to 30% of battery, means you're gonna have more consistent performance because once you get below 30%, you start getting some slightly decreased performance from the vehicle. Uh, fuel, which basically keeps the vehicle running on fuel most of the time. Uh, so you are kind of running efficiently like a hybrid, but you are still keeping charge there. And then you have a system which basically runs the vehicle all the time in charge mode, so it's always full and always ready. So say you wanted to go into an area where you have to drive an electric, not so much an issue in New Zealand, but in some markets it is, that mode will let you keep the car fully topped up. Now, how far can it go? The combined range of this vehicle is 970 kilometers, which is pretty sizable and up there with the best of the hybrids. It's getting up there with some of the other plug-in hybrids, uh, but they have, I guess, more high performance petrol motors under their bonnet, which do help that. Uh, whereas this one seems to focus more on having that bigger battery, that more EV experience, rather than being outright PHEV range as some of the other Chinese vehicles have tried to do. Right, let's take it for a drive. Right, so driving the Leap Motor REEV. Now, before we go too far into it, I'm going to caveat that this car still does have quite a few beeps and bongs. If you've watched the first review, you will understand that the systems I said at that time were good, but you know, the old justification of them being pre production. They still technically are. They say they've made a lot of improvements to the vehicle, but at the same time, in this launch, they did encourage us to switch a few of them off. And certainly with me driving on the wrong side of the road, um, probably my lane obedience and is a little bit off as well. And that may be adding to some of these bongs that you're hearing. Um, it's getting better, but we'll, I'll reserve judgment until we get to drive again on New Zealand roads as to how far advanced they've really got that. But does having that engine up there make a difference to the way the car drives? And really not much. The car is pretty much the same way, and it has the same power output. So 158 kilowatts or 300 and 320 newton meters, zero to 100 about seven seconds. Um, it's fine. It's not the fastest EV slash hybrid out there. The performance is adequate. Same with the ride. I think it's quite a comfortable, usable car. It's not overly firm. It's nor is it a sporty, exciting car. The steering is a bit numb, but works again. 
find as well. One interesting thing I will note with having the range extender system the way they've done it here, where it feeds into the battery and then into the motor itself, that comes with some benefits and some negatives. Now, one of the negatives is that when the car gets down to a very low battery percentage, under 9%, it will actually potentially affect the performance of the vehicle. And that's because that petrol motor only puts out 50 kilowatts of power. So if you ask the uh, car for more, say you try to do a lot of acceleration, you know, pull a heavy load, that kind of thing, it can't draw that power from anywhere. So it's gonna have to limit engine output to what it can get, or motor output to what it can get from the engine. Conversely, when you are driving and you've got more of a battery range and you say, go up a hill and put your foot down, the car doesn't rev up in the same way that a certainly a Sea Lion does. Uh, it maintains a really steady, efficient level of engine speed. So you've got an advantage there. You're not getting that coarse, high revving engine. Or you can do, as we've seen in the BYDs, and set the amount of battery you want to uh, recover. Um, but yeah, I think for most people, leaving it just EV or EV Plus is going to be totally fine for daily use. I mean, Auckland's average commute is 22 kilometres, and if you're getting 145 kilometres and you can use 90% of that, you're not going to have to charge for three days if you really don't want to. One note on the charging, unlike the battery version, which has 11 kilowatt AC, this one's only 6.6, .6, but then we're talking about a relatively small battery, you know, around that 28 kilowatt uh, hour mark. So really only a four to five hour charge time. And the other thing I'd note is it is an LFP battery, uh, which means that you can use the whole thing. Where we've seen plug-in hybrids with uh, NCM batteries, of course, you've really got to watch that top 20%, which when you haven't got a huge battery, means that there's a, a big chunk of your range you're sacrificing there. So overall, really impressed. I'm still impressed with the actual build and feel of the Leap Motor. I think these guys are the closest to Tesla when it comes to building a an, an EV-like car, a Tesla-like car. Um, really impressive interior. Still, you know, still lots of hard plastics, but they're not the worst in the world. So kind of my summary on this car is that it may not match up to the C-Line 6 and the Jayco J7 SHS in regards to maximum range, maximum performance. But I think as far as plug-in hybrids go, this is probably, let the, let the speaker, the uh, Jet Satnav do it speaking there. This is probably the most battery electric of all the plug-in hybrid vehicles. One area where Leap Motor does trump its competitors is towing. Like the battery electric vehicle, this uh, REEV can tow 1500 kilograms braked, which is kind of about normal for an SUV of this size. It's not even low by petrol or hybrid vehicle standards in either the battery electric or the range extending uh, version, which is, yeah, handy. This is quite a practical vehicle from that perspective. Now, interestingly, Leap Motor doesn't actually build their own petrol engines. This motor is from Dongfeng, another Chinese manufacturer, but it actually has really strong provenance. It's the H15R unit. If you're wondering what it is, it's a Nissan engine that's also been used in a lot of Renaults. So we've actually seen the engine in a lot of smaller Nissans and Renault products around the place. It's been around a very long time, arguably an old, older tech engine, but for this purpose, that's pretty much perfect. And I would suggest it's gonna be really reliable. Uh, also handily, and this is probably because it's a relatively low stressed uh, older design engine, it takes 91 fuel, no need to go and spend on premium. The lack of traditional transmission is also like to mean lower servicing costs, and in the long run, even better reliability. Right, so that is the Leap Motor REEV, or as the distributors in New Zealand would like to call it, the super hybrid. Now, what other vehicles can you look at next to this vehicle? Well, there are the traditional hybrids, the uh, Toyota RAV4, you've got the plug-in hybrids like the Mitsubishi Outlander, but realistically, you should be looking at this against the BYD Sea Lion 6 and the JQ J7. Now, both those vehicles actually offer a little more range uh, when it comes to overall, but less electric vehicle range. This has by far the biggest battery. Now they all offer about the same kind of price point. This is $49,990. And I do think though that this one is probably, if you're an EV lover, the purest of the vehicles and certainly something that should be considered. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe for more. We'll have a story out about this online in the magazine really soon.